Hi, I'm Dr. Adrienne Sprouse for Your Environmental Minute, and today we're on location at the American Academy of Environmental Medicine Conference in Phoenix, Arizona. We have the worldwide experts on environmental medicine here, and today our guest is Dr. Jeanette Hope. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for having me on. What kind of symptoms do your patients come in with? The problems that we see with health usually come from water damage conditions in indoor environments. When that happens, you have an abnormal uh, population of mold. Uh, there tends to be certain types that flourish in those settings that uh, can be particularly problematic for health, uh, both in terms of um, at times infections and um, mainly uh, toxic exposures that can trigger inflammation and other health conditions. How can people get mold in their home? water damage. If water um, gets into building materials and is not identified and dried out quickly, the growth of mold can be established and start to grow. And as long as the mold has food, uh, material to grow on, and moisture, it can grow. How does mold actually make people sick? Intact spores, um, when they're alive, uh, can lead to growth of mold. And there are certainly people who get sick from infections from spores that take hold and, and trigger infections. And it can happen in people who were formerly healthy. It can happen more in people who've been sick or in some ways immunocompromised. What is actually the bigger risk are the smaller particles, um, which can be quite small, small enough to get deep into the lungs and actually be much more prevalent in these settings than the spores. The problem with these fragments are that they carry the chemicals, the, the poisons that make people sick from these exposures. The chemicals were created by the mold as it was alive and growing. That's what we uh, become concerned about in these settings. And um, that's also important because these small fragments are not measured in air testing. A common thing I hear is people want to kill the mold. They can kill the mold actually fairly easy. Many, many things will kill mold, but um, the dead mold is as dangerous as live mold for most people. So if someone calls in a mold remediator to come into their home and clear their mold, are they really home free at that point? It depends. Usually um, when somebody tells me that, I ask them, what the problem was, uh, what happened, has it been identified, and what did they do to resolve it. Things that happen uh, frequently are somebody goes in to fix it, will maybe choose to use some bleach and then paint over it. That's going to make the situation worse. You have moisture you're putting in with the bleach, you're, you're hiding it, you have not solved the problem, you have worsened it. Another situation I see happen is somebody goes in um, and starts cutting into the wall and attempting to do what needs to be done, which is to actually physically remove all the damaged building material. The problem is that when you you start to cut into walls, you make airborne um, large amounts of uh, these materials. And if that process took place without protection of the rest of the home, you have now taken a problem that was in one area and spread it throughout the home. One thing that's important to understand is that your personal belongings that you've had in that home are very likely contaminated by uh, mold spores and these smaller fragments and mold toxins. What's also important for you to know is we have no good way of knowing how bad any single item is. There are some tests available, but even the tests that we have are only going to test a small portion of each material. They're expensive, they're impractical. They are done in some cases, but there's no test that I am aware of that can you know, wave a magic wand over something and say, this is okay, this isn't okay. So they have to deal with the reality that much of what they own and love will have the potential to make them sick if they take it with them. Paper is going to be the worst. So paper items of any sort are really not going to be salvageable if they've been exposed to uh, water damage moldy settings. Uh, soft materials are also very problematic. Uh, furniture, um, uh, bedding, clothing, uh, things of that nature. Um, the more solid surfaces have a greater potential to be able to be cleaned, but may or may not be able to clean, be cleaned to a level that someone who's been made sick by an exposure can tolerate. Uh, 
big point of discussing are the electronics because um, uh, people don't always think of them. Uh, you would think they're fairly solid plastic and can be cleaned. Um, a computer, for example, even the keyboard would be very difficult to clean, but that's not really what I'm so concerned about. It's the internal working of the computer that is always pulling air in and sucking the air back out. Um, I've seen pictures of the insides of computers and they're pretty ugly. So when you explain that to someone, they can can understand it as horrible as it sounds to have to think about replacing these expensive items. So what is the best solution for someone who's been exposed to mold? If we have a pretty good idea that this is what's making them sick, there are things they can do uh, to get better. The most exp important thing they can do is get away and get completely away from everything that made them sick. Some people will get better just by doing that. Not everybody will. There are people who have to do some other things to, to get their health back. But, uh, but getting completely away from the exposure is the most important thing they can do. Dr. Hope, you've been great. Thank you for being on your Environmental Minute. Thank you very much for having me on the show. I'm Dr. Adrienne Sprouse, and this is your Environmental Minute.